Hi, and welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. Today's topic is getting help with bioinformatics software. We're now starting to reach the end of the semester, and uh, my hope is that you'll move on from this course to learning about these ideas to applying bioinformatics in your own work. As you start doing that, and you may have already run into this already, um, you will start using software that other people have developed and applying that in your own work. And you will find that things are not always going to go smoothly. So sometimes you're going to try and run a command and you're going to get an error message um, or uh, something else might go wrong. You might That command might fail to run altogether. Um, and you're going to need to figure out how to correct those errors. My goal with today's lecture is to give you some tips that can help you try and correct errors on your own or get help with software from other users or developers of the software. Now, when I start thinking about um, how software can fail, um, there's typically two categories that I think of. Um, the first is that the software can fail silently. And when software fails silently, what happens is you have run a command and that command has completed, it has generated some output, and as far as you know, everything went okay, but something went wrong and there's an error in that resulting data. Now, that is, that's really bad. That's basically, you know, in my opinion, that's basically the worst way that software can fail because you don't know that it has failed. And so there may be some error in there that could impact things that you plan to do downstream with that data. The alternative to this is that the software can fail loudly. So when software fails loudly, that means that you get some sort of an error message and you know something went wrong. Um, that error message can be very informative, so it might lead you in the direction of um, solving the problem, um, or it could be uninformative. It could just say something like, there was an error. Um, and that can be really annoying. Um, and, you know, as a software developer, uh, 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 excuse me, as a software developer myself, my goal is that my software should never fail silently. If it's going to fail, it should let the user know. And if it fails loudly, it should give the user some guidance that is going to help them to get beyond that error message, to figure out how to correct what they did wrong. Um, but sometimes, um, you know, things from the development side uh, fall through the cracks and there ends up being a way that the software can fail um, loudly and give an uninformative error message. Um, another alternative here is that the software could fail loudly, give an error message that is meant to be informative, but maybe it's not informative to you. Maybe the um, wording of the error message is a bit too technical, um, and so it's not geared toward um, users correctly. Um, that can also be pretty annoying. Um, often you may be able to get some help from the developers on how you interpret that error message. So when software does fail loudly, what do you do? What are the next steps that you should take? Um, the first thing that I will typically do is I will copy the error message and I'll Google it. Um, you can, you'll be surprised at how often that leads you to some discussion of this error, um, maybe on a site like Stack Overflow or Seek Answers. Um, it might uh, help you figure out the, the issue. Um, it also might lead you to a support forum or an issue tracker for that software. Um, and this would be a specialized place where you could go to get answers to some of the questions that you might run into. And these would typically be geared toward the particular software that you're using. I'm going to show you an example of that now. This site that I have up here is the Chime2 Forum. This is an online tech support um, uh, platform for the, as you can probably guess it, um, Chime2 software package. Um, now this, this forum has been around for about four, maybe even five years now. 
Um, and uh, my lab has led the moderation of this. Um, before that, I was very involved with the Chang One Forum, so I created that in around 2009 or 10, um, and spent years um, as the moderator and the lead contributor on the Chang One Forum. And so I have a lot of experience working in these types of communities as a moderator. Um, and so if you have run into um, an issue with with some software that you're trying to use, you've Googled it, um, haven't come across an answer, probably the next thing you want to do is figure out how the developers of that software provide technical support to their users. You can usually find this on the project's website, so they might have um, information that says, you know, go to our forum or post on our GitHub issue tracker to uh, get technical support with the software. Um, you can also look in the paper um, as a very, it, uh, if they published a paper on it. As a very last resort, you could consider trying to reach the developers by email. Um, but I would recommend that really as a last resort because um, you are often, um, you know, if they have a technical support forum, they're probably not going to want to answer questions by email, but rather answer them on the community forum. Um, the reason for that is if they answer your question on the forum, then others can learn from that answer. And so then that reduces their technical support burden. Um, if they're responding to everybody by email, then nobody can um, learn from the answers that they're providing. And so they end up answering the same questions many times. Now, when you see a forum like this, especially if you're new to bioinformatics, um, this can be really intimidating to jump into. Um, but it shouldn't be. Um, you, you know, everybody really starts from the same point. And so um, I can definitely understand, I can relate to that um, feeling of being intimidated to post to forums. I mean, I still get that sometimes, um, you know, when I'm posting to a forum for some software that I'm using. Um, because, you know, I might feel like something is a dumb question that I'm asking. But if you do um, a little bit of homework, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about here, um, then you shouldn't feel intimidated about posting. Um, you don't want to just go here and post right away. There's a few things that you want to do first, and I'm going to talk about what some of those things are. Um, the first thing is, um, you know, if you decide that you, um, if you found a forum and uh, you want to try and um, use this to answer your question, absolute first thing to do is search the forum. Um, see if the question has been answered already. If the question has been answered already, you don't want to post the question again. That's a good way to um, annoy the moderators because they will, um, you know, maybe feel like um, you haven't done any research on this before um, trying to take up some of their time. Um, now, if you search the forum and you find some questions that are um, closely related, but they don't exactly answer your question, um, keep note of where those forum posts are. So I would typically copy a link to that somewhere. And then when you do post your question, you can um, describe what you already did, what resources you already looked at to try and answer this on your own. Um, and explain you know why those forum posts don't seem to exactly answer your question that's a really good way to show that you have done your homework before posting a question and that's a good way to um, have the uh, forum moderators be excited about helping you out um, so okay so you've searched you haven't found anything uh, maybe you took um, a couple of links down for topics that seemed closely related but uh, not exactly answering your question. Um, the next thing you really wanna do is just try and get a little bit of a feel for how this community interacts before you go and post there. Um, before you, you know, go and take somebody's time, just spend a half an hour or an hour poking through previous questions, reading questions, reading answers, um, and just getting a feel for how people interact. Um, you may also um, find that the community has guidelines. Um, so here I'm going to our community code of conduct. 
Um, you may see that they have guidelines about how to interact in this forum. Um, you should absolutely read those. Um, in this place, we have two sets of guidelines. Um, in this case, we have two sets of guidelines. Um, and our Chang2 Community Code of Conduct is really probably um, the most important thing to be aware of as you're getting engaged in this community. This document describes our expectations of individuals who are engaging in the Chang2 community. And so that can be folks like myself who are developing Chang2 um, or teaching Chang2. Um, it can be folks like you who are using this and want to ask questions on the forum. Um, so again, this is mostly describing our expectations for how you're going to interact uh, in this community. And uh, any um, uh, violations of this, um, depending on the severity of the violation, um, might either result in a warning from the community leaders, um, or ultimately it could involve uh, you getting banned from the forum. Um, so you really do want to be aware of this stuff, and it's just a good way to um, engage in this community by starting out by understanding how they interact, what they expect of you. Okay, so now maybe you have um, run into an error with the software, you Googled the error message, you didn't find anything, you found the support forum for the software, um, did some searching there, didn't find an answer, um, and did a little bit of reading on, on this forum just to sort of familiarize yourself with it. Next step is you probably want to think about creating a post. Um, so some guidelines about creating a post. Um, first of all is start it um, either as a new post or as a follow-up to an existing post, but only if that follow-up is relevant. Um, so you don't want to just post sort of in a random spot on the forum or um, some question that is only partially related um, to what you're asking. Um, that by posting in the right place, you're just helping us keep things neat. Probably the most important rule when it comes to posting, um, aside from code of conduct type of things, um, is don't cross post your topic. Um, so cross posting would refer to posting through multiple uh, means of communication. Um, and so that could include things like um, posting a new topic on the Chang2 forum um, and uh, at the same time replying to existing posts with the same question. Um, that can, um, that, that is um, generally frowned on or always frowned upon. That's really bad practice because what can happen um, is that multiple moderators might, uh, different moderators might notice the post in different places. And so, for example, I might notice your new topic, while one of my students who helps out on the forum might notice, notice your reply to an existing topic. Um, in that case, we mo might both start answering your question at the same time, um, and then we're wasting effort. And so we're both replying um, to answer the same question um, when one of us could be working on something else. Remember that in most cases you're not paying for this technical support and so you don't want to do things that are um, going to irritate the moderators even if you were paying for it you don't want to irritate the moderators um, but you know just post put your post up there be patient, wait for folks to have some time to read it and reply. Um, and, you know, most likely they will get back to you um, either with an answer or with um, a reply for um, a request for more information. Um, if you have gotten to that point, you know, the other thing to think about is um, making sure that you're posting um, a good topic for this forum uh, uh, for this forum post so like maybe you say something like I have an error with this um, particular command um, or, and you know maybe even more detailed than that um, and then in your post you're gonna want to describe specifically what the error is that you're running 
What you should not do is make uninformative posts that are, um, you know, for example, something I've seen before is just where the, the subject is urgent or I need help now. Um, we typically don't appreciate that. You know, if you post that subject, that helps us sort through the messages that we have without having to go into each one. Um, to see, oh, okay, that one looks like something that I might be able to help with. That one doesn't look like something I'll be able to help with. If you don't put information in the subject, it means that every moderator is going to have to click into your post to figure out if it's something that they may be able to help with. Um, you'll often um, have a forum moderator ask you to um, change your uh, topic post if that comes up. Um, so you so you put a good topic po um, a good topic subject on there. Um, the next thing that you want to do is um, make sure you've got all of the information that is needed in that post. Um, and so that will typically what that will typically look like is a description of what it is that you're trying to do, um, a copy paste of the exact command that you tried to run and any error messages that you got from running that command, and then information on where you're running this. Um, and so maybe something like I'm running this on my Mac OS laptop, or I'm running this on my Linux supercomputer. Um, and then the version of the software that uh, you're using when, you try, uh, when you're running into this error. Um, that will ensure that the uh, person who is reading your post has as much information um, as they might need to help you, uh, and it'll usually result in you getting answers more quickly. If you don't provide that information, typically the first response that you're going to get is a request for more information. Um, and it'll be that information. It'll, they'll ask you, what was the command that you ran? What error message did you get? What version of the software are you using? And so if you can just be um, proactive with providing all of that information, you're going to get an answer more quickly. OK, so I want to show you now um, about um, a little bit about like how I might work through this. OK, so I put together um, a little example here um, with um, whoops. Um, a little program that I wrote called count seeks and first thing I'll do is I'll just check what version of this I'm running um, so I'm running this program called count seeks and this is version 3.1415 um, and so I've already done a little bit of um, learning about how the software works um, and so I know that I pass this a DNA sequences, um, or sorry, a FASTA file. Um, in this case, it's going to contain DNA sequences. Um, and I run that, and this tells me how many sequences there are in that FASTA file. And so this is what it looks like when this runs. And so I found this great code. It's helping me with my analysis. Um, and now um, maybe I want to try this on a different file. Um, and so imagine I now am going to run this on DNA sequences 2.fasta. Um, based on the topic of this lecture, I think you can probably imagine what's going to happen when I run this. Um, so I ran this and I'm getting some sort of an error message. So um, invalid file um, and then some uh, creative uh, use of emoji to tell me that something went wrong. Um, in this case, I do see like there's some information in here. It's pretty confusing. Like I don't really know how to interpret everything in here. Um, but I do see something like if I read through this, it says does not look like a FASTA file. And so this is giving me some information that I can use to debug. Um, but what's funny here is I know that I just passed in a FASTA file. So what do you mean this doesn't look like a FASTA file? Well, before I go and post on um, a forum to try and get help with this, um, what I might want to do is just take a look at this data. Um, and so 
Um, one of the commands that we talked about earlier in the semester for getting a read-only view of a file is uh, this command called less, L-E-S-S. -S. Um, and so if I call less on this file, I can take a look through here and I see sequence data in here, but sure enough, this doesn't look like a FASTA file. Um, I see these at symbols where normally I would expect that um, greater than symbol. I see these pluses in here. I see these things that don't look like nucleotide characters. And if I you know, know a little bit about bioinformatics file formats, um, I can probably tell that this is not a FASTA file. This is a FASTQ file. Um, and so this error message um, gave me some information it would have been nice, like, so this is kind of like a moderately informative error message. Um, so it is giving me some information that turns out to be correct, but it's buried in there a little bit. It would be nice if this was better geared toward a user. Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be, um, but let's just be happy that this failed loudly rather than doing something incorrect. Um, and so like an incorrect thing that this could have done here would have just been to count every, uh, every line in this file that wasn't one of those header lines. Um, in that case, it might've counted my DNA sequences and my quality scores and given me a value that was too high. So this is better than that. It's not ideal, um, but at least I'm able to use this um, information to try and figure out what's going wrong with this file. Um, so really like your first step here is look at the data. Even if you think you know what's in that file, take a look at it again, make sure that something didn't get mixed up somewhere along the way. Um, okay, let's try this with one other file here. Um, and so now I'm going to do count seeks on DNA sequences 3.fasta. And this time I'm getting a totally uninformative error message. And so this is still failing loudly, but this time I have no idea why. It's just telling me invalid file. Um, so what do I do here? Um, this seems like a good opportunity or good, um, good, uh, situation for posting on a forum if one exists. Um, and so if I were to do that, um, what the forum, what would be most helpful for that forum post is going to be if I can tell them what version of count seeks I'm using. Cause if I'm using an old version, maybe this is a bug in the software that's already been fixed and I just need to update the software that I'm using. I should also tell them exactly what the command is that I ran. And they're probably, um, you know, especially for something like this, where we're just calling a command and we're providing one file, they're going to need to know something about what this file is. Um, and so let's take a quick look at this file ourselves. Um, so. And so if I look at this, like this, does look like a FASTA file to me. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna zoom through here real quick and just see if I can get all the way down, um, at least further along in there. I can see this still looks like a FASTA file. I'm just seeing A's, C's, G's, and T's in here. Um, so I don't really know what's going on here. Um, so, the developers of this or whoever ends up helping me with this is going to need to see that file. Now, one of the things that you can do to help move this along quickly is create a really small example of this um, that recreates the error. And then you could provide that file as an attachment to your post. Um, and you can then give them something that they can use to reproduce the error. So one command that we talked about um, earlier in the semester was the head command, um, which uh, gives us the first few lines of a file where we specify the number of lines that we want on the command line. Um, and so like dash four gives me the first four lines of a file. 
And so what I might do here is I might say um, head dash four DNA sequences, um, and I'll just say um, I'll just put that in this new file. This might be some syntax that you're not um, familiar with. That um, greater than symbol just means write that to a file. If I look, I now see I've got two sequence records in there. And so now what I want to do is I want to say, okay, does, does the error still happen when I provide that? Um, and it doesn't. And so that tells me, okay, that didn't work exactly so something is different about this full file um, than this smaller file and so one of the things that you can do here i mean you could try you know just sharing that original file in the forum post but if you can um and you know and that might um, then take some time to get an answer but what you might also want to do is just experiment with this a little bit like okay what if i do the first 50 lines of a file instead of the first four. And now I run that again. Oh, okay. So I got an invalid file that time. What if I did, um, I'm just scrolling through my commands here. What if I did the first, say, 40? So now first 40 lines in there, still an invalid file. Okay, so I'm sort of working toward the smallest possible example here. So what if I look at the first 30 lines? That one worked. So when I did the first 30 lines, it worked. When I did the first 40 lines, it failed. And so let me go back and do the first 40 lines again. I'm gonna run it again just to confirm that it fails. Okay, sure enough, it fails. So let's look at that and see if we can figure out what is going on. Because now we've got a much smaller file and I suspect there's probably something going on toward the end of this file. And so I just jumped to the end and actually look at that. I just noticed what's going on right there. And so here I see that there is a sequence here, um, a sequence header here, but there's no sequence following it. And then there is this new sequence record and so it, what it looks like is I have a record in this file that has a sequence header, but no sequence. And so what I just did here was while trying to find the smallest example that would recreate this so that I could post a good forum post, I ended up solving the problem for myself. And so if I go back and I'm going to use a text editor called Vim, this is a little bit, um, little bit advanced to work with, um, but you can just sort of follow along here. Um, if I go out, oh, sure enough, there it is on line 39, I see that sequence record that doesn't have a sequence associated with it. So if I just delete that, I can save my file. I can try this out again. And sure enough, it worked that time. And so again, while trying to find a minimal example that would work with this, um, or that would, so I should say should not, that would not work with this command. Um, I ended up solving the problem for myself. And number one, I got some good experience with debugging code. Number two, I got my answer probably quicker than I would have if I had posted it on the forum. 
Now, let's say you already posted on the forum and then you came up with this answer. What you should do to be a good community member is to now go back to the forum and post a follow-up that says, oh, I sorted this out. It turned out that I had a record in my file that didn't have a sequence associated with it. Um, and if you do that, that alerts the moderators of the forum that they don't need to invest time in trying to figure out what's going on, trying to help you out with that. Um, now, if you're a software developer, um, an even better thing that you could do is maybe offer, you know, could I contribute some code um, that would give a more informative error message if this happens in the future? Um, and that's a great way to start getting involved in an open source software community. Okay, a couple of last tips here. Um, remember that when you are posting on a forum, um, the forum members, like I said before, are often volunteers. And so you wanna be really respectful of your time, of their time. And if you're really respectful of their time, um, you know, you are not cross posting, you are um, clearly putting in some effort to try and answer the question yourself, or at least help them to answer um, the question quickly, um, you'll find that uh, they will be typically very happy to work with you. Um, remember, they're not there to do your work for you. Um, they're there to try and help you out with your research, um, often, again, on a volunteer basis. Um, so do everything that you can to make it easy for them to help you. Um, you, of, you, of course, you know, as in any time you're having a public interaction or any interaction, um, be, be polite. Um, treat people with respect. Treat people as you would like to be treated yourself. Um, remember that when you're posting in a forum like this, um, this is, this is going to be public. Um, this is going to be on the internet. Um, and just like anything that you post on the internet, um, it could be linked back to you and it could reflect on you in the future. Um, so you want to avoid, um, being rude. You want to avoid, um, getting into arguments in these types of, um, situations. You never know, like, um, you know, when a potential, future employer might, um, you know, search your name on the internet and come across um, some embarrassing exchange that you had on a forum. Um, so, you know, just think about, you know, everything you post in this environment um, as representing you as a person and your values and who you are. Um, and, you know, if you do that, if you stay polite, um, even if, you know, even if somebody else is impolite, you know, just take the high road um, and um, just, again, interact with people as you would like them to interact with you. Um, and I think that you'll have a good experience um, working in these types of forums. If you don't, you know, maybe that's just a forum that you don't want to visit again in the future or that you don't want to put any effort into um, contributing to. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is, um, you know, these forums operate by um, community contributions. And so if a forum has been helpful for you, as you learn more, think about trying to help other people on that same forum or on other forums. Um, we've, we, you know, all start out somewhere um, and we can improve our knowledge, improve our skills by getting input from others. It really, um, for me at least, you know, I learned a ton about microbiome research through the Chime Forum and uh, ultimately through the Chime 2 Forum, um, just by interacting with people, helping to understand, um, uh, or helping people to understand how to use software that I was writing or that my uh, colleagues were writing, um, and in hearing about the types of things that people want to do with my software. Um, these, uh, getting involved in these forums, especially if you're contributing to them can also be a good way, um, to create career opportunities for yourself. Um, so I know of a few cases where, um, people have gotten jobs, um, that ultimately resulted from interactions that they were having on the Chime 2 forum or on the Chime 1 forum. 
Um, they met people, um, and uh, you know those people turned out to be future employers, um, or they just uh, you know built up um, some repu some good reputation in the community through their interactions on the forum, um, and that ultimately led to new career opportunities. Um, so these uh, can be um, you know really good for your career to engage in the forums. Um, okay, I think I am going to wrap up there for today, and I will see you next time.